Hi everyone, I'm Rochelle, and I have three little girls. Anna, who is four years old, Chaley, who is two and a half, and Gemma, who is seven months. And if you're joining me for the first time, welcome to my channel, where I make videos on integrating the Montessori method with our Catholic faith at home. I cannot believe that Lent is just around the corner. One of my favorite traditions during Lent is praying the Stations of the Cross together as a family. And this year, I really wanted to make that sacred tradition come to life for my girls. I wanted something that was hands-on, something that they could be actively participating in. So I put together a Montessori-friendly Stations of the Cross, and my girls loved it. Not only were both my preschooler and toddler just really actively involved in praying the stations with us, but they really seemed eager to learn more about the passion and death of our Lord. So if you're looking for a child-friendly Stations of the Cross that not only has those beautiful traditional aspects of this sacred tradition, but is also hands-on for the kids, I've got you covered. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a Montessori-inspired Stations of the Cross that you can do in your Catholic home. So let's go ahead and discuss what you will need for this activity. For this activity, you will need a Stations of the Cross for Children prayer booklet or something similar, a large basket that you can leave on your prayer table or even on your child's shelf, printed and laminated images of the 14 Stations of the Cross, a bag containing 14 different objects that symbolize the stations, 14 tea candles, a lighter, and a snuffer, which is completely optional but really fun for the kids. So let's go ahead and discuss the objects in that bag. I chose 14 different objects for each station of the cross. Something tangible, something physical that the child can actually hold and recall that station. You can absolutely find these objects around your house. I went ahead and found some band-aids and some tissues I already had, a little crucifix. And then the things that I didn't have, I went ahead and just found an image online and quickly printed it. So I know that you can get creative, you can try to find what you have around the house without having to buy anything extra. Many of the objects that I did find were inspired by Lacey over at Catholic Icing. So if you wanna check out her blog post and get more ideas, I'll make sure to link her website down below. So in no particular order, these are the objects that I gathered for our stations. I have a rope to tie the hands of Jesus, a cross, three band-aids to represent the three times he fell, a statue of Mary, a piece of fabric to represent Veronica wiping the face of Jesus, tissues to represent the women weeping, an image of the Pieta, nails in the shape of a cross, a heart with a cross inside to represent Simon helping Jesus carry the cross, a miniature garment to represent the clothes stripped from Jesus' body, which I just quickly made, a crucifix to remind us of his death, and a rock to represent the tomb. I'll make sure to list these objects and the stations that they belong to in the description box below. When your family is ready to pray the Stations of the Cross, have your child, who is already confidently counting, set up the Stations of the Cross by asking him to line up the stations in numerical order and place them on your home altar. Then have your child place an unlit tea candle above each image. You will want to ensure your child can reach the prayer table, so make sure it is low enough so he can successfully place each image and candle independently. Next, with supervision, light all of the candles before you begin. After announcing each station, follow along with the prayers in the booklet and then holding up the picture, ask your child to find the object that reminds us of that station. For example, which object in our basket reminds us of Veronica wiping the face of Jesus? Direct your child to the basket to find the correct object. Once he finds the object, 
have him place it on top of the image. And if your child grabs the incorrect object, there's no need to correct him, but instead just make a mental note in your head to present the Stations of the Cross to him again. You may find that the child actually fixes his or her own mistake anyway. After placing the object on each station, you may want to sing a stanza of the Stabat Mater like we did, and then have the child snuff the candle. Continue this way until all of the stations have been prayed and the objects in the basket have been matched. And just a reminder, like any activity in a Montessori environment, you will want to first present this activity to your child before you have him do it. So I went ahead and actually presented the whole Stations of the Cross to my daughters as if we were doing it during our family prayer time. So that when it came time for them to put the stations in order and put the candles there and find the matching objects, it wasn't a crazy mess during our prayer time. It was actually really beautiful. And they felt very confident doing it in front of daddy <laughs> and myself and doing it together during our actual prayer time. And the last thing I wanted to add was don't beat yourself up if your child can't sit through all of the Stations of the Cross. <laughs> Depending on your child's age or their temperament, or maybe they're not even used to sitting for that long of a period of time, the Stations of the Cross is long. And that's why I personally wanted something that was gonna be more active, more hands-on. So don't beat yourself up though if your child isn't sitting through the whole thing. Perhaps consider praying a few stations at a time each night until you get up to the whole 14 stations by the end of the week. That's one way that you can go ahead and go about praying the Stations of the Cross as a family. Another idea is to use this activity like shelf work. So to actually put the basket on the child's shelf and just use it to teach about the passion and death of our Lord during Lent. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss a new video, which I do try to post every other week. Thank you again for coming to my channel where I make videos on integrating the Montessori method with our Catholic faith at home. Have a wonderful Lent. My prayers are with you. God bless.